Today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. In today's video, we're going to see if it's possible to upgrade our old laminar flow nozzle to make it look 10 times as cool. Guys, a while back, I built a laminar flow nozzle. I showed you all the parts and pieces you can put in to make your very own. They're all from a hardware store or a grocery store. It's actually a fairly simple thing to build. Well, today, we want to try and upgrade that. When I finished that last one, I said that someday we might get around to doing that, and today is that day. Here's the basic idea. We've shown you in the past how to build a laminar flow nozzle, and today we're going to see if we can upgrade it to add some things like a pressure regulation system and a glowing light. Here's what we're thinking. We're gonna try to build a new laminar flow nozzle with maybe a couple of cosmetic upgrades, but overall, the main goal is to add two things onto it. One is a pressure regulation system. We're gonna use this bucket for that. The other is we're going to try and add lighting inside the nozzle itself, which should hopefully make the stream of water act like sort of a fiber optic cable carrying the light and making it really visible if anything interrupts or breaks the stream. So now that we know what we're going to build, I'm gonna go grab Cali and we can get started. Hey, do you think you can give me a hand with this video? Mmm, can't. Are you still playing Raid Shadow Legends, the collection RPG game that's taking the mobile gaming landscape by storm? Yeah, me and 10 million other people have downloaded in the last six months. Oh, that's pretty cool. I saw that it also has a nearly perfect rating with over 200,000 reviews in the Play Store. Yeah, this game has something for everyone. Like, you can battle with other live players or you can just collect characters. That's what I'm doing. The game is growing super fast and the development team has published a roadmap of planned updates for the next six months. Updates like new factions, a tag team arena feature, and even a new clan boss that allows you to fight with your clan mates. So there's infinite content for you to enjoy and no time to get bored. This is absolutely the best time to join the action, so go to the description in this video and download Raid only through our link to get 50,000 silver immediately, plus a free epic champion as part of the new player program. Awesome, so do you want to help me with the video? You know, um, I'm good. You did, you did such a good job on it before. You, you've got this. You, you're good. Okay. I love this game. First off, we've got our four inch ABS pipe. You could also use PVC. We got ABS because I wanted it to be black and we only need about one foot of it for a laminar flow nozzle. This is two feet, so we're gonna chop this down. After you're finished karate chopping slash using the chop saw to uh, cut the pipe in half, I'm just using this edge of the scissor blade. It's not even the sharp part, it's just the edge to just scrape off all of the residue that gets stuck because ABS plastic likes to melt a little bit when you cut it. And so I'm just trying to scrape all that off. We only need one of these for one laminar flow nozzle. We might build a second one for something else. So, first thing we gotta do, we're gonna grab some of our Scotch-Brite sponges. These are about that thick, and we need to cut circles out of each of these. These are almost the same width as the inner diameter of our pipe, and so we are going to trace out a circle the size of the inside of the pipe, and then we're gonna cut three of those out. We've got our three sponges, and the next thing we need is three rings that we are going to stretch screen mesh across. This time we've got a coupling here, and this coupling actually fits fairly nicely inside the pipe with just a little bit of play to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some rings off of this, and we're gonna fit our mesh over that. Here's a piece of screen material. We have a scrap of it. We've got our ring, we've got our mesh. And if we just line that up on the opening of the pipe, we should be able to push it in. Sometimes it's gonna be a pretty snug fit. Sometimes there might be a little bit of play. So while it's in here like this, I'm just gonna get a little bit of super glue and go around the edge to attach the screen to that ring. We've got our three rings and our three pieces of screen attached to them. The glue is on there, it's drying. To speed it up, I'm gonna try just adding a little bit of baking soda that catalyzes with super glue. So hopefully that'll make it all dry a lot quicker than just sitting and waiting around for 20 minutes. This time we're gonna be using caps. These are for a three inch pipe and they go over a three inch pipe. But they fit pretty nicely into a four inch pipe. It's a very snug fit, which is what we want. You're kind of going to have to pound it down into the opening and that gives a really snug fit and then we add a little bit of glue and it's going to hold on forever. So we need to add a hose attachment onto one side and on the other side we're just going to cut a hole and that's where we're going to make the opening of the nozzle which is going to be made out of soda can again. Now we have a hose attachment, fits almost entirely inside of this. If, uh, if the hole you have is just the tiniest bit bigger it might actually thread down more but it's a quite tight fit. And just to be sure, we are going to go in and seal up that gap to make sure that really no water or air even 
can get out through that hole. So that's going to be on the back of our laminar flow device right there. Now it's time to make the one that goes on the front. So we've got one board here and then we've got this oversized but fairly thin board that we're gonna put down on top of here. We're actually going to screw through this board, through the aluminum, into the board down below to try and make sure that it's really pressed on there very nicely so it's not gonna move, nothing's gonna catch or seize and we'll get a nice clean hole. That's a pretty nice clean cut. I like that, I think we can make that work. Now we've cut the holes into our soda can pieces and uh, what we need to do now is make sure that they're completely smooth and flat. The tiniest edge or lip or burr or even a slight scuff can mess with the stream of the water coming out of our device. This other cap is going to be the top of our second laminar flow device and so we need to drill a hole right in the center that we can attach this onto. The goal here is to get a hole drilled into the ABS that is just slightly larger than the hole we have drilled in our aluminum. Now we're going to use glue and tape to hold this piece of aluminum onto our cap. We've got the pipe, we've got our three sponges, we're gonna put all of those in, push it in an inch and a half or two inches, something like that. Then we're gonna take one of our mesh covered rings, fit that in behind them. And our cap with the hose attachment is going to go right behind that. That's gonna fit in on top. However, because we want to try adding a light into this, there's another modification we need to make and that is to make room for that light. What we're gonna use is some quarter inch vinyl hose and that's actually going to be fed all the way up through the whole device because there's not really a good place to add the light in near the top and I think it will interrupt the flow less traveling through the whole thing. So we're gonna have a small hole drilled here in the bottom this hose is going to travel up through the mesh, through the sponges. We're going to have a bunch of thin straws after the sponges is gonna travel through those. And the other two meshes, basically the entire thing, we're gonna have the hose just travel right down through that. And then we're going to put an LED light with wires in the hose coming out the side. That's how we'll attach the electricity. All right, so our LED light bulb is, the back of it is wedged into this quarter inch tubing and it doesn't actually have any spare space. So that probably would have made it waterproof, but just to be sure, I melted a little bit of the tubing down around it, then I added a tiny bit of glue, and then I put some heat shrink around the whole thing. So we have our LED bulb that's gonna be in the water stream, like that will be surrounded by water, but it shouldn't be able to get any water into the tube because it is like triple sealed around the bulb, and then the whole tube will leave the rest of the laminar flow device without water being able to get into it. So this should now be able to be fit down through the holes that we melted in our screen and our sponges. But before we do that, we're actually just gonna drill the hole that lets us go into the side of the whole laminar flow device. Now it's time to add straws. So what we're gonna do is just add as many of them as we can, just resting up against those sponges down at the bottom and just pack it in as tightly as they go and nesting perfectly. That should help all of the water just get aimed in one direction. With all the straws in place, it's time to add the next two screens, one of which gets pressed right down against the surface of the straws and the other one gets separated an inch and a half or two, about halfway between where the straws are and where the top of the container is going to be. And we want the end of our light to line up pretty much right with the top of the highest screen. So that's where we're getting it lined up to. And then we're just gonna use some glue to hold that in place. And I think we'll speed that up and help build up the secure portion of this just by using a little bit of baking soda. One more thing that we're gonna change is we are going to try and add a pressure regulating system onto this. So basically what it is is we have a bucket, we're gonna add a hose in line, a hose out line, and a valve up at the top. And what we're gonna do with that is we'll have the valve open, pour water in just with the hose, let it fill up to the valve, then close the valve off, and that's gonna leave a sort of air cushion at the top of the bucket. If there's weird pressure changes in the water line, water's non-compressible, and so all that's going to get passed on to the laminar flow nozzle and just hit that, and it might mess with how evenly it's jetting out. With the pressure regulation system, there should be a sort of air cushion. So that air should squish, it should act kind of like a pillow, so any high spikes in the pressure should get mitigated a little bit by the bucket system. So now we're going to seal it up permanently. We're gonna use glue and close off all the gaps so nothing's just leaking out. But this is so good. And just as a quick test, there we go. We got the blue light still shining through. 
this is not a very official way to go. And as I was saying before, like if you wanted anything long term, you wouldn't want to have even just your 12 volt battery power source this close to the water. I'm doing it like this because this is not being installed anywhere, permanently set up anywhere. It's just proof of concept, testing, making sure everything is working. And then I also went ahead and I made this one that has three different lights in it. And they're kind of at odd angles, so it's hard to see the bulb itself, but you can see a little bit of the light glowing out there. There's a green one. Which color is that? Is that the blue one? There's a blue one. And I've got a red one. And so with that one, hopefully we should be able to have multiple colors creating like combinations. So like, uh, I think green light and red light together should give us yellow light. We'll see how well that works. I don't know if it's gonna all blend together really nicely or if we're gonna get individual colors. We're gonna have to see once it gets a little bit darker. But there's a couple other things I wanna try. I saw a video of a laminar flow fountain somewhere. People were like dropping a ball down this railed track and it would get caught at the top of the water. So it would just go up into the arc and it would just stay spinning there. And I wanted to see if we could replicate that effect a little bit. We're not gonna have the whole rail system and our laminar flow nozzle is not nearly as large and powerful. That one was shooting six feet into the air with a much larger volume of water, probably not pumped by just a garden hose. So we've got these practice golf balls here and I'm thinking that we can get a similar effect. Now, at the moment, I'm pretty sure it's just gonna catch the ball and throw it a little bit. Um, to get it to stay, what we need to do is we need to change the angle so that the arc of the water is about the same as the radius of the ball so that the water comes up on one side and then down on the other side. And that's what sort of catches it and keeps it there. But let's just see what happens if we throw this in. Yep, just kind of gets launched a little bit. All right, let's see if we can point this straight up and down enough that we can get our ball to just sort of chill there. I don't think that's enough yet. Ooh, it's, it's better though. It's staying longer. You can see how it like gets near the top and just kind of like chills there for a half a second. Let's see about just a tiny bit more power. So close. There it is. <laughs> New one comes in and it just pushes that one out of the way. <laughs> hey, it worked. <laughs> Turn on the light. You can see a little blue spot on the ball from where it's being held up by the water. Oh my gosh, that's gonna look so good. And it's dark. If you wanna see more of this type of thing, Veritasium has actually done an entire video on it, so you should definitely go check that out. Very cool, I'm glad we got the golf ball thing to work. That's one of the things I was most excited to try. Uh, now I think at this point, what we need to do is just let it get darker, and then we can come back and turn the lights on, try the triple colored one, see what effects we're getting. I really wanna see that in the dark. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> when it's not on the concrete, like there's, there's no noise. It hits so smoothly, there's not even sound. That's fantastic. <laughs> all right, I think it's time for the three color. See if that works at all. Because there are three bulbs, they aren't centered. They're all just slightly off center. And I'm not positive what that's gonna do. Hey, yeah, we're getting kind of a yellow dot now with the red and the green turned on. Blue and green gets us. Ooh, we've got cyan. Man, that is pretty. All right, now here's the other test. If we turn on all three, that should give us approximately white light. And it's definitely leaning a little bit toward the blue, but overall that is working. Man, that is, that's its own whole really cool experiment. In school you learn how colors mix together. If you're using paint, then red plus green equals brown. But when you're using light, things work out differently. Red light plus green light equals yellow light. Red light, green light, and blue light all mixed together is not like a bluish brown like it would be with paint. No, it's white. And that's basically what we've got here. I am super happy with how well that turned out. Look at that. Also a big thanks to our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Click the link in the description to start playing today. It looks kind of like when we made slurp juice by draining tons of glow sticks, but an electric version. All right, guys, you know that's not all. We've always got more for you to see. Click that box up at the top to check out our most recent video, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.